Today on The List, Hollywood hits based on unbelievable true stories, get extreme with outlandish sports on TikTok, and why blue collar is the future of high paying jobs. Nobody on dirty jobs looks prosperous. No one looks successful, but it's shocking how many are. Plus, unleash your inner racer on a go-kart. You gotta be one with the cart, so you gotta kinda feel it. But up first, inside the world of immersive art experiences. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey guys, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And KG, those immersive art experiences have exploded in popularity the last few years, allowing people to experience the world's greatest artwork in a revolutionary new way. Yes, and because the shows travel and are so visually striking, they've become a huge favorite on social media. But is this just a passing trend, or could it be the future of art? An insight into immersive art is our featured story at the top of the list. Immersive art experiences have drawn massive crowds from across the globe in recent years. You can't escape it. If you yeah. have been at home, you've seen these huge, really blockbuster, immersive displays. The art is around you, and you get to be a part of that world in some way. Immersive Van Gogh, Immersive Monet and the Impressionists, and Frida Kahlo and Immersive Biography are among those that have been hugely popular. So to get some insight into these shows and why people keep coming back, we met up with Jacob Pinholster, founding director of the Arizona State University Media and Immersive Experience Center. Brand new Emerging Media Technology Center that we built to be at the leading edge of this field of immersive media technologies that has evolved over the past five to 10 years. First, let's take a look at their origin. It's really amazing because it's like five or six different factors. It was projection technology and playback systems becoming cheaper, more affordable, easier to use. Combine that with the need for museums to bring in new, younger audiences. It was the confluence of all those things around a time when everybody's already experienced with video games and with this idea of universes. You have gamers yeah. who are used to like rotating their joystick and their little guy, you know, <laughs> looking all around and the experience it's literally is all around you. That was probably one of the tilting motions that sort of led us into that. Millions of tickets have been sold for these successful exhibits that provide a one-of-a-kind, multi-sensory experience. Something about literally standing in the middle of something that is emphasizing and amplifying that experience. Colorful digital projections, sound, and VR submerge visitors into the life and work of each subject. They're painters that had an intensely different view of the world, so I think there's something about seeing through their eyes that's really interesting. Yeah, like you have a little minute where you're in their head. Yeah, exactly. These projects offer big production value that can easily be transported from city to city reaching a wide range of audiences. You just need projectors. You don't need to rebuild the space. Right. You just move right into a space and project all over the walls. So it's a, something that's infinitely portable. Finally, it's no secret that these experiences have become a social media hit, which begs the question, is their purpose art appreciation or entertainment? I've heard a lot of people say, it's for the gram. <laughs> yeah. And is it? I mean, it depends on the user, right? Like that's what art's always been about is what value does the end user, the audience member get out of the experience? Because ultimately every ticket sold equals support for the arts industry. I hope there are people that are coming in just to get a selfie backdrop because they're doing it for the gram, but then they're discovering something more, right? Like they're discovering some new experience. That's always been the way like art works on some level. We're immersing ourselves into art exhibitions at the top of the list. The Bureau of Labor says there are 10 million job openings in the U.S. right now. So where did all the workers go? TV host Mike Rowe has studied the workforce extensively, and he's offering up an answer along with some advice for anyone searching for a job. I need six of them buckets in there, Mike. You already had me behind all day. I need six of them buckets, Mike. <laughs> Mike Rowe's show, Dirty Jobs, is on the Discovery Channel. He features hardworking Americans who take on the gross gigs that help society run smoothly for the rest of us. We've done 350 jobs. Mike knows a lot about America's workforce, so we asked him a question on a lot of our minds. We still see so many help wanted signs out there. So where'd all the workers go? Seven million able-bodied men between 25 and 54 are sitting on their couch. They're not only not working, they're affirmatively not looking for work. He's not sure how they're getting by. Something is making it possible for people to check out of the workforce. Maybe they've invested shrewdly. 
Maybe they're trust fund babies, but I don't think so. And that's never happened in our country, not during peacetime anyway. He says they're desperately needed. I know construction supervisors and foremen who are paying 40 and 50 bucks an hour right now to train people in apprenticeship programs. Can't find them. His advice for those guys is get a job and learn to love it. Learn a skill that's in demand. It may not be your passion. Don't start looking around to answer the question, what will make me happy? Nobody cares. Need help? Check out MikeRowWorks.org. My foundation offers work ethic scholarships. Anybody's welcome to apply. He wants people who are willing to learn a solid, skilled trade. We're looking for welders, pipe fitters, heating and air conditioning specialists, aspiring electricians, any of the construction trades. And if you turn out like some of the dirty job workers on his show, you just might become a millionaire. A lot of the people we featured in the early days and a few that you'll see in this season are millionaires. Business owners can cash in big if they're willing to do the hard work. The father and son who cleaned this pool that I'm lounging in behind my, myself right here, it's backbreaking work in South Florida, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. This muck racks up big bucks. You're perfect for this show. Yep. Nobody on Dirty Jobs looks prosperous. No one looks successful, but it's shocking how many are. Mike's final advice? Be useful, be curious, work your butt off. You'll be all right. Some insight from the guy who gets down and dirty with America's hardest workers. There's no better way to shake off those winter blues than to get the heart racing. Jackie Denker is getting us revved up with a trip to the go-kart track, and she has tips and tricks that'll have you driving like a champ. If you are looking for ways to get more speed this year, we have you covered. We came to a great place. We have high speed carts that go up to 45 miles per hour. 45 miles an hour. And while it's fun to just go fast, the goal is to win the race. Knowing how to perform really well is key here. JP Mullen, Chief Operating Officer at Octane Raceway in Scottsdale, Arizona, is going to give us some tips to try and get that number one spot. Starting with, get to know your cart. These carts are fully functional as far as all the adjustable. So actually, the steering wheel goes up and down, your uh, seat can slide back and forth, and your pedals can actually move too. So make sure to adjust each accordingly. You want to be in a good area where you're still flexible and have reach all the pedals quickly and accurately. <laughs> you get it? No. There you go, there you go. Oh, I feel good. Yeah, I like it right here. Both the feet on the pedals. Having a good knee bend is really important too. And of course, buckle your seatbelt. Safety first. We'll get you a helmet and you're ready to hit the track. Yay! You ready to go, baby. Once you get going, it's important to regulate your speed for optimal success. Do you just like put pedal to the metal right away or is there kind of like a method to that madness? Ah! It's not just holding down the gas the entire time. It's about knowing when to speed up and slow down. And he says the turns is where you put that to the test. Ah! What you want to do is... You stay out really wide and you want to tap the brakes just before you get into the turn. Okay. Because if you go in too hot, you're going to start spinning out. Ah! Then nicely corner the edge of the turn and keep that momentum. And then accelerate as you exit. And there will be other drivers, so if you want to win, you're going to have to pass them. So you can be strategic about passing. Yeah, find a good area where there's going to be a big change in momentum. Namely, the turns. They take the inside line, and you take the good outside line. Yep. You'll let them go past you, and you'll sneak right in. Favorite part of kart racing is always passing. Finally, don't fight the cart and have fun. You gotta be one with the carts. You gotta kind of feel it. Be the cart. You don't want to fight it oversteer because when you kind of pull it too hard, it'll cause you to spin out. It's all small movements too, right? So it's just a small movement here and there. If you wait to the very end and just jerk it, that's gonna cause a spin out. Or if you go too hot into a turn, you may find yourself drifting, which may look kind of cool, but... The more you drift and more you kind of slide, the less speed you keep up. Crazy! That's the ultimate adrenaline rush right there. A girl can dream. Can I just, can I just? You can hold my trophy for a little uh, bit. One day. Feeding our need for speed with Go-Karting 101. Still to come on the list, why grapes are great for your diet. In about five grapes, you're getting about 15% of your vitamin C for the day. Plus. 
take a leap into wild extreme sports and everyone has their own truth. You won't believe the movies that are based on true stories. A bear did cocaine. All that and more ahead on the list. Hey YouTube, I know you're right in the middle of watching and this is such a great episode, but I just wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. Okay, back to the show. Welcome back in KG every January. You hear people vowing that this will be the year that they finally eat better. Yeah, but what if better meant not just healthier, but also tastier? Well, today we're talking about a fruit that we all know pretty well, but that we've maybe been taking for granted. Yeah, we have some unique ways to add grapes to your diet and some recipes you probably wouldn't expect. Grapes may be the fruit you never knew you needed. Grapes have so many good properties to them. And not only that, but they're great for cardiovascular disease and heart health. To learn the benefits, we spoke with registered dietitian Ashley Hawk. So what is the difference between red and green grapes? The red grapes have a property in them called anthocyanin, and that's actually what gives them this red color. So green grapes are essentially a red grape without the anthocyanin in them, which is why they don't have that red color. It's that quality right there in the antioxidants, in the anthocyanins, that is gonna have all those heart healthy nutrients. It's got the antioxidants, it's got the flavonoids. These are the things that are actually gonna be able to help your heart health, and they're gonna decrease your risk for cardiovascular disease. So when grabbing for grapes, she says consider going for red over green. Next up, grapes are packed with nutrients. They're high in fiber, they're high in water, they're high in vitamin K, the potassium. And on top of that, they have got different properties in them that can even boost your workout because it makes it easier to get your blood flowing because you've got that natural sugars in there. So she recommends to incorporate a cup of grapes daily in your diet to really see the benefits. One cup of grapes is just about 100 calories. And in there, we're getting about two to three grams of fiber and all those natural sugars. So this is a really great snack just to have on hand and enjoy as is. And in about five grapes, you're getting about 15% of your vitamin C for the day. So we pulled together some fun ways to get your grape on. So I love doing frozen grapes. And what I like to do is instead of ice cubes, I put frozen grapes in my water. It cools it down. And when you're done drinking it, you have a delicious little treat at the bottom. So this is a whole grain rice cake. And what we're gonna do is add a little bit of whipped cream cheese and then go ahead and decorate it with the chopped grapes there. We're calling these little fruit tarts or little fruit pizzas. And then you can add some nuts as well. I feel like grapes are the unsung heroes. Absolutely, of the produce world sometimes, really? right? Really? <laughs> this is fantastic. A great snack. It's very easy to make, very light, but also has a lot of nutrients. And don't think we forgot about dessert. So here I've gone ahead and made a classic blueberry muffin recipe, but instead of blueberries, I put in the red grapes. I love that. And they're diced up and they're so good. And we're also going to make a mug cake, okay. a grape mug cake. And if you're not familiar with what that is, a mug cake is essentially a single serving dessert or cake that you just put in the microwave. For the full recipes, head to our Facebook page, The List Show TV. We're keeping you healthy with grapes. Add one more thing to the internet's list of accomplishments. It's the birthplace of some really crazy athletic activities. Teresa Strasser's checking out some extreme sports born on social media. Hey, Teresa. Thank you. When you think of extreme sports, drifting, rock climbing, maybe even skydiving come to mind. But this year, you're about to see crazier sports than ever before. So today, we're showcasing three extreme sport athletes who show off their moves on TikTok. Coming in at number one, user Rocky River Extreme Ironing. Yeah, you heard and saw that right. Extreme Ironing is what they're calling it. User Rocky River Extreme Ironing is showing off his skills by ironing a shirt in isolated and challenging locations. So it ain't easy to be seen. When you see me ride by, they can see the gleam. They're also ironing while underwater or even on a ripstick. <laughs> and that is two things I would never do done at the same time. At number two, free diving athlete Tavi Castro. Tavi takes us free diving down to the depths of the ocean, a place that most of us have only seen in movies. 
using no oxygen and no scuba gear, Tavi is diving on just one single breath. Haunting, beautiful, and a little bit scary. Last on our list of extreme sport athletes on TikTok, free-flying Nicole Smith Ludvik. You know how we do. <laughs> Nicole takes her followers free falling, an adrenaline fueled version of skydiving, which Nicole's been doing now for 15 years. I got my head out this sunroof. I'm my favorite tools. This daredevil is most famously known for being the youngest person ever to skydive in all 50 states. And now she helps others stir up the courage to try it for themselves. <laughs> just watch from right here on terra firma and those were some extreme sport athletes on tiktok more to come on the list stay right here we're back on today's watch list if a story about a bear eating a bag of cocaine and going on a rampage seems too ridiculous to be made into a movie well guess what cocaine bear guys it's gonna be in theaters next month Addy Dijamal looks at based on true story movies that are stranger than fiction. <laughs> movies like 50 First Dates prove that sometimes truth really is stranger than fiction. About a year ago, Lucy was in a terrible car accident. She lost her short term memory. These are movies that are based on real events. What a filmmaker is looking to do with the film based on a real life story is capture the spirit of what was happening more so than the actual facts. Rotten Tomatoes correspondent Mark Ellis is here to help us celebrate art imitating life. And it starts with the roar with Cocaine Bear. Beth, we should go. The movie is loosely based on the events surrounding a cocaine shipment that didn't go as planned. They dropped a bunch of cocaine packages into a forest. A bear got into one of them. He knocked back 75 pounds of nose candy and in the movie goes full Scarface. It's not necessarily what did happen with this particular bear, but what could have happened. Apex Predator. High on cocaine, out of its mind. It's in theaters on February 23rd. So to hold you over until then, we have some other crazy but true movies you can watch now. Ordinary, nothing special there. Are you even trying? Next up is I, Tanya, a mockumentary about Olympic ice skater Tanya Harding and the attack on fellow skater Nancy Kerrigan. I, Tanya is the kind of movie that teaches us all to hate the sin, but try to wrap your arms around the sinner. It explores Tanya's troubled past, which might have led to her making such a costly decision. Your immediate resignation from the U.S. Figure Skating Association banning you for life. It's obviously a tragedy for Nancy Kerrigan's career, but it also does lend some sympathy to Tanya Harding, and that's what a good movie should do. Do you have any idea who I am? I've never even met you. <laughs> Let's end with some laughs. 50 First Dates with Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler. It's based on real events, but with added comedy. Don't worry, you're not going to suffer any short-term memory loss, but was your head shaped like an egg before she hit you? In 1994, there was a young woman who was in a car accident. Still, to this day, cannot form new memories. It's going to be all right, Liz. Don't call me Liz. I barely know you. Sweetie, you're sort of dating him. Sorry, I'm not better looking. Mark says the common thread that ties all of these movies together is empathy. If it helps us understand your fellow human being or your fellow animal a little bit better, then I think these movies are good on top of being just a great two hours full of entertainment. Hollywood proving you can't make this stuff up on the watch list. I honestly can't tell if Cocaine Bear is going to be really awesome are just really cheesy. Oh, uh, well, you say it like it's a bad thing because turns out cheese doesn't have to be your guilty pleasure. It's actually good for you. Last on our list is coming up. Hey, guys, welcome back. It's time for what's last on our list, which actually, Jimmy, might make you sick. Literally? Figuratively? Literally. Hold on to your belly, because the Washington Post has good news about cheese. It's much healthier than you thought. Okay, for the record, cheese, it's not you, it's me. You're kind, you're delicious, you're always there when I needed you, but 
Our relationship just wasn't meant to be. Clearly, Jimmy's still broken up over his breakup with cheese. But yeah. for the rest of us, eat your cheese guilt-free because according to a dietitian, cheese is packed with nutrients like protein, calcium, and phosphorus and can serve a healthy purpose in a diet. Now, I understand the confusion here about whether cheese is Gouda for you because, you know, it's going for weight gain and digestive issues, but it turns out that's just not the whole story. Yeah, experts say, yes, it can be high in calories, and yes, it does contain saturated fat similar to butter, but new research says full-fat cheese won't necessarily cause you to gain weight or give you a heart attack. And it's not just that it's not bad. There are actually health benefits like vitamin K that can form during the fermentation process. It also has good bacteria, which can contribute to good gut health. And cheese and full-fat dairy also, this is surprising, seem to be linked to lower risk of diabetes and hypertension. I mean, not that I needed a study to give me permission to eat more cheese, but aged Gouda, creamy burrata, a sharp cheddar, yummy. I know what you mean. In college, I basically lived on that cheese that came in the foil pack and that you stirred into the mac and cheese, add a little water. Good Jimmy, stuff. that is not the cheese that they're talking about. <laughs> and that's what's last on our list. Thanks for YouTube, thanks for watching all the way to the end. You complete me. And you'll complete me even more if you like this video. It's a little thumbs up right down there. Leave us a comment. Make it kind or constructive. Why not also hit that subscribe button? And that way, you're never going to miss a list. And speaking of episodes you may have, may have missed, look right here. I got you some more episodes, hand-picked just for you, fresh out of the oven. Enjoy.